Welcome to Badminton Unlimited, your weekly access to badminton and beyond. On this week's show, we speak to Malaysia's latest men's doubles heroes, Govi Shem and Tan Wee Kyung. And we visit India to find out more about another doubles act, mixed tandem Pranav Jerry Chopra and Sikki Reddy. Twenty sixteen was a momentous year for Malaysian badminton. At the Rio twenty sixteen Olympics, the sport provided three of the five medals the Southeast Asian nation amassed, a haul unprecedented in the country's Olympic history. Among the medalists were Govi Shem and Tan Wee Kyung. The men's doubles duo exceeded all expectations by reaching the final in which they almost won. We never expected we could go as far as to win a medal, so when we did, we were pleased for ourselves. It was truly a great honour to get a silver medal for Malaysia. We felt that our level of performance at that point wasn't worthy of a pair in the top 10 of the world rankings, so it's a fantastic achievement for us to have gone to the final. To witness the Malaysia flag raised that day was a very emotional moment. I felt so proud for myself and my country as it was the Olympics. We caught up with the Malaysian duo at the recent Yonex All England Open to learn more about their remarkable journey in Rio and how they went on to become the number one men's pair in the world. The Yonex Chinese Taipei Open in July marked their last competitive outing prior to the Games, and thereafter, Vishem and Wee Kyung wasted no time in gearing up for the biggest stage of their careers. After competing at the tournament in Chinese Taipei, we were put through an intensive training period before the Olympics. It was a good time for the both of us to sharpen our skills and work hard on areas we needed to improve in. We were one of the earlier teams to arrive in Rio, so we had time to settle and adjust to the conditions at the venue. Working closely with our coach, we studied and analysed our opponents. We also planned our tactics and focused on one match at a time. We three work as a team because we know what we want. Important is the communication. Yeah, we, we improve in our communication, co communicate, then they underst we understand each other very well. Pitted in Group B at the Rio Olympics, the Malaysians kicked off their campaign in the best way possible by topping the group standings, winning all three matches, including a vital victory over China's seasoned Olympians, Fu Haifeng and Zhang Nan. We were quite surprised to beat them. We were determined to top the group, and it wasn't easy getting past Fu and Tang, as they were very experienced. We were determined to win so that we could get a good seeding for the draw in the knockout stages. The quarterfinals saw Vishem and Wee Kyung drawn against the top seeds from Korea, Lee Yong Dae and Yu Yun Seong. Despite losing the first game, the Malaysian tandem came out fighting in the next two, causing one of the biggest upsets in the competition. Our mindset at that point was to battle on no matter what. We kept on pushing ourselves because we didn't want to leave Brazil with any regrets. So when we won the second game, I knew we had a chance to turn things around. So I was very delighted to have won it in the end. After beating China's Chai Piao and Hongwei in the semi-finals, they found themselves one step away from Olympic glory. But facing Fu and Chang once again, this time in the final, Vishem and Wee Kyung knew it was going to be a totally different proposition. Although we have beaten them in the group stage, we knew it was not going to be easy to beat them again. After all, this is the Olympic final. 
I'm sure they would have prepared better and analysed our game. It's just like how we studied theirs. However, we were confident in our own preparations against them. The final was a nail-biter stretching to three games and with the decider going down to the wire. The Malaysians had two chances to grab the gold, but the pressure proved too much for them even as their opponents stayed calm. It was a bitter pill to swallow, but Vishem and Weekyong took comfort in knowing they had given it their all. I think we lost our focus and composure in the final few points. We were just too eager to finish them off and in the end lost it because we made errors in the vital moments. At first, it was hard to accept that we lost because we were so close to winning gold, especially when it went down to the wire. But what's important is that we played with no regrets and we gave 100%. The experience in Rio fueled their desire and belief in their ability. A maiden Super Series Premier title at the Yonex Denmark Open followed soon after before the pair rounded up an impressive year with the Dubai World Super Series Finals crown. The strong run saw Vishem and Weekyong finish 2016 as the world number one men's doubles pair. To there were some who thought that our Olympic silver medal was a fluke and that we were fortunate to get to the final. But we weren't about to rest on our laurels even though we'd won an Olympic medal. We had bigger ambitions, so we continued to train hard and we just got better. Our partnership improved and the results started rolling in. We won our first Super Series title in Denmark and then won the Dubai World Super Series Finals title. It's quite an achievement, and I'm glad we proved we can be the best. I think 2016 has been a remarkable year for our partnership. Looking back, we have cherished and enjoyed every single moment of our achievements. 2017 is a new year, so we need to look forward now. We have already set new targets for ourselves. Hopefully, we can keep the momentum going. Tan Wee Kyung and Go Vi Shem have proven capable of taking on the world's best. With a few major titles already in the bag, the Malaysian duo looks set to dominate the headlines in 2017. Time for some badminton trivia. This week, we want you to name the youngest European BWF world champion. Try not to Google the answer. Have a think and we'll reveal who this player is after the break. When we return, we are in Singapore and we visit Optimum Badminton Academy to find out how they are encouraging the young to take up the sport.
Before the break, we asked you to name the youngest European BWF world champion. The answer is Carolina Marin. In 2014, at the age of 21, the Spanish shuttler defeated China's Li Xue Rei to seal her name in the history books as the youngest ever European badminton player to claim the BWF World Championships crown. Marin clinched the prestigious Yonex All England Open the following year and defended her World Championships title, both against the same opponent, India's Saina Newal. More recently, the Spaniard won gold at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. The success of badminton in any country is determined by the level of engagement the sport has with youngsters. While the role of government is important, private initiatives too are crucial. The island nation of Singapore has been home to a thriving club culture that hones the talent of promising youngsters. Optimum Badminton Academy is one of several training centers in the city-state offering development programs. Badminton Unlimited dropped in on one of their training sessions to find out more. It started like five years ago. My students itself suggest that, hey coach, how about we need more training, you see? But the school couldn't provide. So I would say, yeah, why not? You know, we start a small class, you know, on, on one of the weekends. Then as we progress about uh, after maybe one year, you know, you start to see more students coming in, you start to see, you know, uh, more and more uh, students are more interested. And you know, we start from one weekend to two days to every day now. Optimum is one of the few academies in the Lion City run by a former national player. Jaren Wong was part of the 2006 Singapore national team and has taken part in numerous international competitions. After retiring from competitive badminton, Jaren moved on to coaching and was keen to pass on his knowledge and experience to the next generation of budding players. Being an ex-national player, uh, you know, I was really, really inspired to see, you know, if I could bring more and more uh, younger generation coming up, you know, to, to promote the sport. So what, what, what really inspired me is not really that results that you bring, you know, for the players, like they achieve uh, champions. And stuff. It's not really that. It's when you see the, your players like, grow as a person. One unique feature of Optimum is a progress card for each student. Areas of improvement are highlighted and this helps provide a focal point for coaches to work on, making each training session as effective as possible. For this progress card, right, uh, you are based on the student's level uh, and work according to their requirements. So this will help us uh, in understanding the players and also the player itself, you know, they are very clear what is the thing that they need to learn or acquire or what is the thing that they lack of. Video technology has also been adopted by the academy to further aid the development of their players. Training sessions are recorded to help the trainees review and correct their mistakes efficiently. We are able to bring a software that is able to do both simultaneous recording and viewing at the same time. So this will actually uh, save a lot of time. We are really uh, looking into how to improve fast. That's the thing that we really uh, 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 really invest our time and effort in to, 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 to speed up their progress. Apart from its resourceful approach, the budding shuttlers can also tap into Jaren's knowledge and experience. His achievements have also served as an inspiration to his students. Coach John is a very understanding and passionate coach. He's very patient with his students and he helps them and guides them along when they have difficulties or anything. So if you have any doubts during badminton, you can ask him and He'll be ready to help you. Lah. After several trainings and repeated help from the coach, I managed to catch on and improve more on my badminton skills. Jaren believes exposing more Singaporeans to badminton at an early age can help build the pool of talent in the country and aid the growth that is lacking for the nation to succeed on the global stage. If you ask me, right, I would say we need to go all the way down to uh, probably our juniors, probably as young as 5 to 10 years old, that kind of uh, age, to, to make sure our culture is strong enough. A strong culture right, will definitely help in the consistency of delivering our results. The task of producing world-class players may not be in Optimum's agenda just yet, as it aims to build a strong base for its local shuttlers. And who knows? 
Maybe a new generation of talent will emerge and help transform this little island into another global Asian powerhouse. Europe was once again the focus of badminton action last week when Basel opened its doors at the St. Jakobschal to host the Yonex Swiss Open 2017. Finals day at the Grand Prix Gold event began with women's singles. Chen Yufei took on compatriot Chen Xiaoxin as China's young starlets squared off against each other. Scores were neck and neck in the first game as both players fought hard to keep pace with each other. But at 19-19, it was Yufei who blinked first. Xiaoxin took advantage and went ahead to clinch the opener. World number 14 Yufei started brightly in the second game, but her challenge quickly waned once Xiaoxin got back her momentum. She was soon sailing into the lead, and after 53 minutes, the match and title was hers. Chen Xiaoxin victorious with the final score 21-19, 21-14. It was a Southeast Asian battle in the following mixed doubles final. Thailand's Dechapol Pravaranapro and Subsiri Te Ratanachai were up against Indonesians Pravin Jordan and Debbie Susanto. After a slow start, the Thai world number 11 pair clawed their way back into the reckoning to take a 1-0 lead. The Thais kept their focus after the restart and successfully kept Jordan and Susanto at bay throughout the second game. The Indonesians simply couldn't find a way past their opponents and had to settle for the runners-up spot. It was a first Grand Prix gold title for Pravarana Kro and Te Ratanachai, 21-18, 21-15, the final result. Women's doubles was next and China's number one seeds Chen Qingchen and Tia Yifan faced Bulgaria's top women's pair Gabriela Stoeva and Stephanie Stoeva. The Stoeva sisters managed to hold their Chinese opponents in the beginning and did well to tie at 12-12. However, Chen and Jia upped the tempo from that point and surged ahead to comfortably take the first game. The Bulgarians matched point for point at the start of their second game, but with their energy levels depleted, their challenge wilted as well. World number 5 Chen and Jia were largely untroubled after taking the lead and closed the match in straight games. The final score, 21-16, 21-15. Badminton powerhouse China dominated the next two finals. Men's doubles had Chai Piao and Hong Wei battling for honors against countrymen Liu Cheng and Zhang Nan. A feisty start to the match, but it was Liu and Zhang who had the extra edge in the opener. Chai and Hong didn't take long to reassert themselves in the following game. The world number six pair forced the match to a decider after tying it at one apiece. And as the third game wore on, Chai and Hong gradually took control after Liu and Zhang's attempts to stay in the contest fell short. The title was Chai and Hong's after 54 minutes with the final score 13-21, 21-16, 21-15. Rounding up the day was the men's singles final, and it was a contest of the tournament's top two seeded players. Badminton superstar and top seed Lin Dan stepped up to the court to take on his young compatriot Shi Yuqi. Two-time Olympic champion Lin was dumped out of the Yonex All England Badminton Open by Shi recently, and the 33-year-old proved he can still be a winner after coolly taking the first game. 21-year-old Shi responded well in the second, but any chance of a repeat of his giant killing in England quickly evaporated as soon as Lin kicked into gear. Once he'd taken the lead, the former world number one never looked back. A third Swiss Open crown for Super Dan. The final score, 21-12, 21-11. After the break, we catch up with India's Pranav Jerry Chopra and Sikhi Reddy to find out more about their blossoming partnership.
From the legendary Prakash Padukone to Rio 2016 Olympic silver medalist Prasala V. Sindhu, India has a proud history of producing world-class players in the singles discipline. In recent times, the country has made some headway in doubles. Women's doubles duo Dwala Gutta and Ashwini Panapa's World Championships bronze medal in 2011 proved that doubles was a promising area for India to invest in. The latest mixed doubles pair from India to catch the attention of fans is Pranav Jerry Chopra and N. Sikhi Reddy. The new coach from Malaysia, Tan Kimhar, he decided uh, us to play together. We were playing doubles and uh, we were not really uh, training for mixed doubles before. And when he came, he actually made specific programs for mixed doubles. And he wanted both of us to uh, try initially as a pair and uh, see, for, see for some performances and results in the tournament. And I think the results were good, so he asked, he asked us to continue and that's how it was done. Badminton Unlimited dropped by Hyderabad, India's badminton hub, to meet the current world number 14 pair. We sat down with Jerry and Siki to find out what makes this combination work and how their friendship off-court has helped strengthen the partnership on-court. So we, were, uh, we were, anyway, we were good friends off the court also. And I think that really helped us to uh, gel on court because uh, somehow I feel that we have got the understanding now and I think we think alike. Jerry, with his height and physique, takes charge of the attack at the back while Siki does the job of creating the openings at the net. So basically, he has to do a like a full 70% of the job and my, my job is to create an attack for him because he's very good at attack and uh, he has very good uh, control at the uh, like placings and all. So we can't go into the defend like uh, all the time, so I have to give him an attack. So basically, our play must be an attack. 24-year-old Jerry is a right-hander and Siki Ayeyanga is a lefty. And the Indian duo have used their left-right combination to their advantage. I think, yeah, that is one thing which is really helping us because not all the pairs are uh, left and right-handed, only few pairs. And that actually uh, also is a distraction for opponent because they play more to the right-handed pairs. The Jerry Siki combo made their international debut at the Bangladesh International Challenge in December 2015. And two months later, they grabbed top honours at the 2016 South Asian Games. But just as their partnership was taking off, Jerry was sidelined for three months due to a shoulder injury. Basically, he was trying very hard to get recovered and come back for the US and Canada. But uh, like, uh, we didn't want to take any risk because by pushing one or two tournaments, we don't want to spoil for, like, for an year or something. So we, thought, we decided, like, OK, let's just get recovered and uh, we'll prepare for the next tournaments. Uh. The wait paid off handsomely. In their first comeback tournament at the 2016 Brazil Open, Jerry and Siki bagged their first ever Grand Prix title and went on to double their record that year with victory at the Russian Open Grand Prix. They actually gave us really good confidence to start off after an injury because winning, nothing is better than winning. And uh, winning two tournaments back to back was really good in our ranking also and also the confidence. The duo broke into the top 20 and rounded up 2016, finishing 15th in the world. Jerry and Siki kicked off 2017 brightly. The duo clinched their first Grand Prix gold title at the Syed Modi International Badminton Championships, where they defeated fellow teammates Ashwini Parappa and B. Sumit Reddy. Incidentally, Sumit and Siki were due to be engaged a few days after the final, and it made for some tricky encounters when they knew they were going to be on opposite sides of the court. Till before like finals, like he was talking to me, he was uh, eating with me together, and uh, and once he knows that I am his opponent, he, he started little avoiding me, and uh, with secretly he was watching my videos and all. But I generally we watch our opponents, but as I know Sumit and Ashwini play, we play together, so I thought no need to see a video 
like particularly because we know how they because play we and train all. every day with them yeah. so even he knows like how we train and all and still he was he was like seeing our videos and uh, writing our weak points and all <laughs> so it was actually fun for me and ashwini i think so th we we saw the fiancés fighting on the court for the title and we were just enjoying it i guess so it was fun for us <laughs> Jerry and Siki's partnership was further strengthened by their winning performance in India, giving them the belief that they could hold their own against the top players. Moving forward, the pair have their sights on bigger targets. We have to be very consistent uh, because uh, many people have kept so many hopes on us. Uh, so we hope to do that uh, in the upcoming tournaments, uh, like in Super Series and all, because we have not played many Super Series. Coach has decided that we should aim for quarterfinals, as in Super Series tournaments, and uh, also try uh, reaching semi-finals or finals in the GP Gold events. And uh, yeah, for the next year, it is uh, the Commonwealth Games, 2018 Commonwealth Games and the Asian Games. So try getting a medal there. For Jerry and Siki, their hunger for success will no doubt drive them to keep pushing for greater accomplishments. With determination and perseverance, this pair looks set for bigger things in future. Before we go, let's take a look at the Badminton Unlimited calendar. Next week, we have an exclusive with Indonesia's new high performance director, Susi Susanti, as the sport's first Olympic gold medalist spearheads the national team.